So we're sitting here with Shelby Shinka and Kenny Jacobson. Shinka. Shinka. Shinka in Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> you guys are at it again. Yeah. You're gonna create an expansion. What have you learned from the last time around? Well, last time around, we uh, one of the things we learned was we underestimated the shipping costs especially overseas so we ended up uh, losing quite a bit of uh, money because of that which set us back which consequently means if um, Zoneplex wouldn't ever never make a profit on it which is which is fine it's something you learn uh, when you're making a board game and we're not the only ones I've talked to numerous game designers who ran into the same thing so you know, you live and learn. You you go for a big box game, and sometimes there's consequences. But in the end, it's like you you just have to be happy. You got your art out there, your game or whatever it is. So it's cool. We're that's why we're continuing and not being defeated with this expansion. Uh, Soundplex is a very complex game, uh, and uh, you said that you wanted to. Uh, there's less random and more control. Like, how would you, uh, why did you take this, this road? We, we wanted to create a variation to the game. I think maybe we went a little, I guess, 80s, really like dice-oriented and really random with the original Zoneplex game, which, you know, I like, like Dungeon Quest and the randomness of games, and I see, like, the randomness in life, you know, being at the right place at the right time. In the same sense, the cards are kind of determining your fate. So you will lose or you will win by, you know, a combination of, you know, risk management, working with others, and choosing when to go on your own. So it was the game was became very complex because of that. So we wanted to kind of give it back to the, give some control back to the players by uh, introducing new tiles so they can decide when certain events happen and they're not completely at the whim of the randomness but like i said it's a it's one way of doing the narrative which which we enjoy as well do you, do you guys feel like this is a modern thing that it was in the old days that there were more randomness in board games and that it's uh more yeah, about uh that it, the idea of how a game should be designed has changed somehow, or do you even care about this? <laughs> yeah, I think I. Well, everything evolves, right? So board games evolve as well. I think. I mean, they weren't that that complex before, and now they are. So, of course, you got to follow the. Uh, The path, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not necessarily. I mean, it depends on the audience too. I think like Zoneplex has it. It's so dependent on the game group, and it's been really successful with people who, like, f someone emailed me saying they they had like a two-year Dungeons and Dragons campaign going, and that's insane. They took a break for two weeks and just played Zoneplex, and it totally worked because it, like in Dungeons and Dragons, everything's so dependent on the group of players you're playing with, and Zoneplex kind of allowed them to still be the same group. And then have this twist at the end where they have to turn on each other. So it might not be a twist they could have done in the actual Dungeons and Dragons. So I think, I think in the end, that's our our target audience is role-playing gamers that want to delve into board games that like a little bit of both worlds. So in some respects, I think I'm glad we did Board Game Geek as our first uh, convention and kickoff convention. But I think like a Gen Con or a more role-playing game oriented that has board games would be the place for Zoneplex and the place for demoing Zoneplex. I, ho I hope we can do it with the expansion like next year or something. How did you feel the reception was at uh, board game geek convention thing? It was it was mixed you know some people got it and some people didn't like they were really into the controlled environment aspect of Euro games which are pretty popular now so, and I think some of it had to do with our tiredness of explaining the game and not having a cheat sheet on our table so people could at a glance get the game, like what it's about. So it's, 
it's a tricky one because you need it's it is about interaction and you can't it's a harder game if you're just in your head and counting cards and trying to like have this deep strategy it's it's kind of shocking you in the sense of you know how life can be shocking and not controllable and that and i think that's the inspiration for zoneplex is life and kind of being a, a microcosm of the human experience if not the you know some of the the downfalls of humans such as greed and stuff since, since it has this built-in like turn on the other players me mechanic so it might it might have been a you know a bit lofty of a game for the casual gamer but you know for me the inspirations were like Alejandro Jodorowsky and kind of like these far out artistic characters who you know make their movies and really went on a certain path and kind of see the randomness and go with the randomness and see I guess you know the signs when you're creating anything and follow that path like in like if you're painting you'll you know maybe you'll your painting will change directions based on kind of what you do so I think Zoneplex is a little bit like that it was kind of following the creative stream opposed to really try and and, and try and make a Euro game, which we didn't. We tried to make a, a kind of a, a mashup of Euro game and a kind of 80s dungeon crawl type thing with a crazy space space monk yeah, pyramid theme, that. which, you know. There were some stories about you guys sporting some radical robes at the convention. How did that feel? Was it hot? It was hot. It was, it hot. was very hot. It's hot and sweaty in those robes, especially when you're explaining. It's the hardest work I've done, I think, sitting eight hours with barely any break explaining a complicated board game. Mm. And it's a, and it's and the thing with Zoneplex, it's a game that your first experience might not... You might not get it. You have to... It, the, the strategy in the game is super subtle with how you're placing the tiles and when you place them and all that. So you don't really get the importance of I'm going to place other people's symbols far apart or the building aspect until you've played it a few times and then you get it so for me i was kind of annoyed at you know i could stand up for my own game i was kind of annoyed that some reviewers were just like ah, i don't like it after I, it felt like they didn't really invest the time to kind of get it but you know it's like anything like some bands records are difficult and you don't get them until you listen to it a few times and you're like oh i get this this record so i think zoneplex has an aspect of that since it, it's a it's a slow climb to kind of get what it's all about. It does, you, you can't just play it once. You have to kind of invest more time in it. How did you guys uh, go about designing the game between you two? What Did you have certain roles or did you just play ball with each other? What do you mean? Designing? Like, you mean? how did you do it when you designed it together? Oh. Like, who came up with the initial ID and... Uh, it was Shelby's main idea, and I think we just played around with it until we uh, found something that we enjoyed. And uh, it's kind of fun actually, because in the end, I think we made a game for ourselves <laughs> and our game group. That's. Uh, but, but isn't isn't that what you're supposed to do? Maybe. I hear a lot of people saying that you should create the games that you want to play. Mm. So you feel that you've been true to yourselves? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, we definitely, we, we tested outside of our group and we got more testers as we got backers and mm. those people get it. But it's like, it's like anything if you're treading new territory, if you're making a weird game that's, you know, has kind of a very unusual theme like you, you you end up creating your own crowd and it could be an uphill battle I mean in some senses I experienced that in the 90s with my band like we were like too hardcore for indie and too weird for hardcore so we were kind of in the middle and people didn't really re people we started to get people that get us but people didn't really get us until we were finished and that was six years afterwards so I'm in a way I'm kind of used to this <laughs> experience with creativity I mean it's hard, it becomes a challenge but you know you stick through it I think it, it's something unique that's out there and you know heck I'd rather make something unique and 
terrible than make something boring and not memorable. Yeah, you know, it's like it's better to make a terrible, weird record than just make something middle of the road. I kind of feel. Not that I'm admitting we made a terrible thing, but you know, you just gotta go with it. You know, Alejandro Jodorowsky making weird movies and going with the flow and and just really being passionate about it. I, you know, I see. I lo I look up to that, and I I kind of model my creativity by just going with it, like you said, like you just want it out there. Because the interesting thing to me. And maybe to some other people, is that it seems like you guys have different ways of looking at creativity. Could be. And do, do you guys feel like this mashup is, is a good thing? Well, definitely, I think. Two brains are better than one. Yeah. So. Yeah, you gotta mix things up, you know, even if it's, in the end, it's it's like music, If the it doesn't matter if the game sold a lot, if it inspires some other person to make a game, if they got the game and it it set a little light bulb in their head to think, oh, I can, I can kind of take what Zomplex did and make this even better and like really, you know, kind of continue the narrative, then, then that's awesome. That's what that I mean. Not to bring up Alejandro Jodorowsky so much, but that's what his Dune did. Like, if it wasn't for his Dune, like, Alien wouldn't exist, and all these other f movies wouldn't exist, and his movie never, never even happened. So it's, I think it's, it's just good to get creative stuff out there to continue the, the creative narrative of humanity. That's nice. Yeah. Um, I know that you guys. Uh work with uh, video games as well. Kenny, you, uh, you've been studying to become a designer for games, from yeah. what I understand. Yeah, I have, and now I work in the 3D graphic area. Do you guys feel that you have learned some important things about designing games that you could use in other fields? Video games, for example, or... Uh... Well, a game is a game, I mean, a physical board game is the same as a uh, video game in the aspect that you have to build a system and it has boundaries and in a board game you create those boundaries by rules you tell you say you can't do this you can't do that in a video game you just program it so you can't walk through that wall uh, so it's the same thing so yeah we'll see yeah I think uh, there's definite similarities with it and the reason we made, I think I, what prompted me to start Zoneplex is I made an iPad game with Eric Sverdang, Try 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 Obelisk, and I wanted to make more games, and he was working on a bunch of other projects, and I had the fire, the fire in me. So it's like, well, I, I could do graphic design, and I can design a game, and I, you know, idea, idea ate it, ideate that, ideate the game. So it just made sense to make a board game. I couldn't make it in a bubble, and then when I met Kenny and he studied game design, said the most important thing is testing. We just, we just went for it. Can I ask you, you guys play a lot of board games. We've been playing board games together. Mm. And, uh, like, do you have any uh, certain inspirations, any particular board games that have inspired you to create Zoneplex? Or was it totally freeform? I think it was a mashup, like mm. a bit of you know you get the mechanics ideas from like Carcassonne and tile laying games and you know maybe there's a bit of Mage Stones, this 80s TSR game that I liked, little stones you placed on the board. And then there's a role playing game aspect and weird comic book aspect and you know you're in a pyramid kind of dungeon crawl maybe that's a bit of fantasy star the you know, sega game and then those dungeons I mean, there's so many things that contribute to it where did the spirit battle monks or what what would you call warrior them? monks yeah what where, where did that idea come from probably comes from a mix of you know dune with the the Fremen, you know, these mystical like warm riders, and a little bit of Star Wars, I'm sure, a little bit of 
Wizards, Dungeons and Dragons. Probably, probably subconsciously kung fu because you like kung fu. Mm. Whoa. Wow. I'm hungry. <laughs> that, that was a, that was a sign from above. Keep on going. Um. <laughs> Do you have something extra that you would like to add, or what's gonna be even better in the expansion? Do you feel? What are you most stoked about? I, I do I like the the twist on it and the fact that there is less randomness to kind of give the players more control. Mm. It the, the game itself is it's it's kind of the same game, but hold on, continue. It's kind of the same game now, but we've added some stuff that I don't know makes the game feel more whole, more complete. I think. Um, and it just feels right. I don't know. Um, it feels right. That's mm. a good answer. Mm. Yeah. Feelings are important. We now even we even have a, a one-player mode in the game. One-player games are very strange, strange beasts. But I kind of I like them for the the oddity of it. So it's it it doesn't sway too far with the. You kind of mechanics in one player games you kind of you're a lot of times left to the whims of how the cards play and it and it and when you play a one player game it's a bit more about kind of this calming personal ritual you know with the cards or whatever so there's a yes yeah, so there's a version of zone plex a little value added with that <laughs> It is at, at its best, I feel, when you're at least four players and you have the most fun, in my experience. Yeah, totally. And I encourage people to open their minds and try to play it for players because it gets crazy. Yeah, that's where you get kind of, you get a lot of these, I feel, classic game interactions. Like moments, like no way you did that. How you know? Thing, the things you live for and you remember yeah. about a game. On a side note, I thought it was really funny. The owner from Bandcamp, he got he back he got the game, and uh, his son, his son's, I don't know how old his son is, nine or something, and uh, he he loves the game, but he you know he hasn't read the rules. He just makes up his own rules and plays the game with them, which I think is great. Like. In some ways, it gets me an idea to, you know, want to release. I, I know this game Stonehenge that came out years ago is kind of open source in the way where ten designers or five designers made different rules based on the same pieces, and it's like five different games in one essentially. I like the idea of having something out there and encouraging people making it. Just you create the tools and loose boundaries, and other people roll with it. That's actually like when I was a kid, we used to play a lot of Warhammer and uh, Hero Quest and Dragon Strike and stuff like that. And we didn't really know English, and all the rules were in English, so we just like made up our own little worlds. And that was really because the worlds were really rich with lore, like just from the characters and the pictures. And I feel it's the same like with the Somplex that. It's easy to like come up with your own situations for it. You're not really directly told how everything works. It's not so. Uh, the game isn't the, like the police, really. It's more uh, of a hippie convention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes I wish we could travel back in time and put Zoneplex kind of in a shelf of an 80s store. Since I feel, for me then, like going to a store and not really knowing about a game and, you know, you couldn't look it up online. That's you, fun. You just kind of went for it and you took risks and you bought things based on the gut feeling of this is the craziest looking artwork ever. And you just rolled with it. 
it's it's a little sad that doesn't that doesn't yeah. exist anymore. But at the same time, if we weren't in these modern times, I don't know if we could have made this game without Kickstarter and all these things at our disposal. But I, I part of me longs to you know if I find the power of time travel to I would do that just to see just to see the reaction. And I mean, me myself, I'll still go into a board game store and look for the dusty game and not even look on Board Game Geek. And just buy it and take the risks. Like we've played games together that way, and it's super fun to kind of just explore, keep the the wonder in it, opposed to being super well informed at all time. In my head, it would be really cool if Songplex at some point became a full-on plastic figure board game, where you could like paint the, wow. the dudes yourself and. Uh, Paint, paint the figurines and stuff like that. Yeah. It's funny, I think, we, you know, Zoneplex, the stories behind it started as kind of this open, kind of this book me and my friend Gabriel were writing, a sci-fi book, and we kind of took apart like some of the ideas from it, made Zoneplex, ran with that, loosely based off some of my electronic music persona, I think. And, uh, in some ways, we I feel like we did it in the wrong order. We should have done the cartoon first, then the comic book, then the breakfast cereal, and then the game. So maybe we'll do the cereal next. If you created a, a cartoon, what would the name of the the main character be? I don't know. I mean, I I wrote a, a script for a kind of a, a Zoneplex prequel cartoon called Out Tribes of Lult, and. Uh, I actually tried to pitch it to Liquid Television. I sent it to the new version of MTV Liquid Te Television. I don't know if MTV is doing it. And I sent it to them, but there was no one bid on it. But uh, it's there, so, you know. Maybe it'll happen. Yeah, zone play. this is just a part of, a, you know, a corner of the universe. I'll make a movie. We'll see. Kenny cool. plays the villain. <laughs> All right, man. Should we yeah, wrap this up? Okay. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Thanks. Take it easy. Always. Thanks for watching this long. Mm -hmm.